before we get into the news, make sure to subscribe to my first and second channels and hit the notification bell to stay notified of future uploads. And follow my Instagram to get notified more frequently of MMA news before it is posted on my YouTube channel, and feel free to follow my Facebook and Twitter as well. Alright, okay, so, uh, with that said, let's get into this big fight, I mean, we'll just start with the main event, you know, because this is the fight that everyone's looking forward to, I'm really curious to see how this does uh, on pay-per-view, because Adesanya is a massive star, and I think he's kind of making the crossover into, like, you know, a legitimate star outside of MMA as well, I don't know if that's just because I think that, or because I've seen any info on that, I don't think I have seen any info, but his charisma is there, you know, he's got a good look. He's very, very funny. He's got an excellent personality, charisma, fights really well. So if he, if he can win this fight and actually become the champion, then, yeah, he's going to be a huge star. Uh, certainly out in uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, go on, you were going to say something there. Well, yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. Um, Adesanya, uh, he's got an it factor. It's very similar to John Jones, very similar to Anderson Silva. There's, there's a... Um, a confidence that uh, emits off of Israel Adesanya. Um, he really believes that he is the greatest. He believes he's something special. The way that he talks about himself and sort of like there's these like almost spiritual undertones to how he like like thinks about like the journey. He believes it, and I think at this point, um, he's experienced enough in the UFC to get it done. I really do, and I think that he's a very special athlete. Um, I like, I'm rooting for Robert Whitaker. I like Robert Whitaker. Um, there's just something about him that he's like an everyman. There's something like, he, he just comes off like a dude that you like, you know, it's, it's similar to you, Michael Bisping. It's like, it's not, you know, I don't love when John Jones and these guys think that they're God's greatest gift. I want to see a guy that, you well, know, yeah. That, but we're just just staying on that theme for a second. You know what I mean? You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, Adesanya is great and all the rest of it, but I, I, I'm a fan of Adesanya. I saw him in Vegas recently. I, you know, we exchanged some nice words and whatnot. He's a great guy and he's an awesome fighter. Just got to be careful, though, that the hype doesn't go to your head. Now, he's not a, a guy that's going to slack off in training, but you start seeing some comments like he was talking this week about how uh, it's the, the show's in a stadium, and that's simply because of him. He said, they've never done a stadium show like this before, and it's because of me. He said, if it was Robert versus Romero, wouldn't be in a stadium if it was robert versus anyone else it wouldn't be in a stadium he said this is because of me and listen i love the guy but when people start saying things like that it's like a little, all right steady on come on mate slow down a little bit especially when you consider the reality of that they've been to that stadium before oh, when holly home for run yeah run the rousey oh. run the rousey versus holly home they've been there before now of course rousey was a massive star at the time but still and Robert Whittaker fought on that card against Uriah Hall, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, there's that. And then also... It's like the reality is they, they wouldn't be in a stadium had the UFC not put in the foundational work and promotional work over the years and years and years. And they built it up to a place where they can make stars out of fighters. I mean, let's get real. I, but that's the issue with Adesanya. It's like you're almost focused on the wrong thing there. It's like that's not really what I want to hear when a guy's talking shit about a fight. Um, but I think it's something that they need to hear. They're almost like they're working themselves up into like this sense of greatness, and that gives them the confidence in this godlike appeal where they truly believe they're untouchable. And I think at this highest level, you have to believe that. Well, that's exactly what I was just going to say. You know, I mean, you do have to have that mindset. You do have to think you're the best. You have to think you're the greatest because, you know, once you start lacking in confidence or doubting yourself for, for a better expression, that's, you know, that's the beginning of the end. You have to think basically that your shit doesn't stink, you know, and you can take an all-comers. I mean, we saw recently he was going back and forth. He had that thing with John Jones and he was talking about John Jones. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Now, this week on Submission Radio, uh, they asked him about Steve Miocic. Would he want to fight Steve Miocic? And this was his response. Yes, definitely. There are certain things we can take advantage of at heavyweight and people think that I'm going to have to put on size, but that's because they're dumb. They don't understand the game. I weighed in with full clothes and boxed, and a box of Dunkin' Donuts last time I fought at heavyweight, and I stayed the same weight, but I still packed a punch and even dropped the second guy. I flatlined him, you know? So, you know, I think it's a little bit too soon to be talking about taking jumping two weight classes and taking on Steve Miochi. That's not me being negative. That's just being realistic. And the fact is, he's got a really, really tough fight here. 
against Robert Whittaker, right? Robert Whittaker is no joke. I mean, as you said, he's the everyman. He's very humble. Um, and, you know, his coach was talking recently that there's a lot of similarities between him and GSP, George St. Pierre. And I totally agree. You know, when you look at Robert, you know, I talked a bit of shit to him. Israel's been talking shit. And he doesn't let it bother him. And that's a very annoying mindset when you're the opponent and you're talking shit and they just kind of laugh at you and giggle and mm. nothing bothers them you know and gsp was good at that just like water off the duck's back and and robert whitick is exactly the same and, and then also when, tremendous rest well when whitaker oh. talks shit he has that shitty australian accent too so it just can't get you angry well, he's just a man of few words, isn't he, Robert Whittaker? Yeah. He's not, you know, he's, he's not he's not a shit talker, you know. Um, but when you look at him stylistically, he's fantastic. Now, if I look at his record, I was doing this before, mm. you know, research, dog, research. The thing about Robert Whittaker, when you look at it on paper, I'm just bringing up his record now. So his last few fights have all been against grapplers. Granted, very, very good grapplers. Joel Romero, of course, a, 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 an excellent wrestler, but a super explosive knockout artist. You know, so I did see some reports this week. People were saying Whitaker fought only grapplers, which is true because Yoel Romero, and then Yoel Romero a second time. Prior to that, Jack Array. Prior to that, Derek Brunson, who was also a wrestler. Prior to that, Rafael Natal, who was a jiu-jitsu guy. Then, of course, Uriah Hall. He was a striker. Brad Tavares, striker. But still, the last one, two, three, four, five fights for Whitaker have been against guys with a, uh, a grappling background. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if you look at uh, Adesanya's record, all right, he just beat Kelvin Gastelum. He was a good striker, but he had a, a grappling background. Prior to that, Anderson Silva, no disrespect. You know, it certainly wasn't the best Anderson Silva. You know, I mean, that fight was very uneventful. It was fun to watch. It was an excellent display of martial arts, but there wasn't too much action. Prior to that, Derek Brunson, he knocked out Derek Brunson, handled him with ease. Brunson was a wrestler, but he was a little bit desperate in that fight. Prior to that, Brad Tavares, Marvin Vittori, Rob Wilkinson. So, listen, it's fair to say... First of all, Adesanya just passed the test every single time and he's looked good doing it. But other than Kelvin Gastelum, the, the competition, you can't compare the two competition. You can't. Which gets for way better competition. Now, X Factors is the time off. I mean, if you look at Robert Whittaker, last time he fought, we'll go down to it again, was uh, 9th of June 2018. Yeah. 9th of June 2018. Prior to that, one fight, in, well, two fights in 17 and then two fights in 16. So, ring rust, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be a ring rust. That's the state of mind. Whitaker's the type of guy that's always training, always getting better. He's a blah blah at jiu-jitsu. He's an excellent wrestler. He actually qualified for the Commonwealth Games. He's the, the Australian number one wrestler at that weight class at 97 kilos. He won the gold medal. He was supposed to go and represent Australia in the Commonwealth Games as a, as a wrestler, but they were going to strip him of his belt, so he, he, he walked away from that. point I'm bringing this up is Whitaker is very, very good, and it goes back to the GS thing and mixing up the takedowns so far Adesanya you stopped all the takedowns okay his takedown defense has been on point I think Adesanya, sorry Gastelum got him down for a second or so but he got up pretty easy uh, but Whitaker I think has a better chance of throwing the strikes and get and then setting up the takedown throwing the hands to, to bring Adesanya's hands up to defend which obviously presents the legs and then you shoot in and get the takedown right and Whitaker has very very fast feet as well he's good at getting on the inside He's only got a 73 inch reach right so he's used to being the shorter guy used to having the shorter reach so he has to rely on his footwork to get in the inside also he's got that big left hook which is a good punch against the southpaw um and Asani on the flip side you know he uses his reach very very well uses a lot of face a lot of misdirection and he's got a very complex diverse striking arsenal so he's going to mix things up but i think Whitaker has more ways to win. I think Whitaker has the harder punches. He doesn't have the variety. He doesn't have the amount of kicks that he has. But he has the wrestling and the jujitsu advantage as well. So I mean, also, it's a very, very interesting. It's also like like meat and potato striking. You know what I'm saying? Like Adesanya is very uh, creative and very diverse. But I think sometimes that bites people in the ass. Um, you know, it sort of this this fight sort of has shades of Chris Weidman, Anderson Silva. Um, just in terms of like style, you know, it's a guy who has really, really great grappling, but can strike and then, you know, uses sort of the, uh, his ability to mix it up, to throw people off. I could see that happening. I can see Robert Whitaker, you know, sometime in this fight, actually catching him and being able to knock him out and being able to win this fight. There was a moment in the Kelvin Gastelum fight, um, where Kelvin, and there was a few times where Kelvin hit, uh, Adesanya and was very effective. And, um, Adesanya is not a guy that 
once again, it's similar to John Jones, where it's like when he gets hit, he sort of like reacts to it. And um, I don't know, I think there's something there. However, you know, if we're, I, we're not really doing picks just yet. I just feel like it's Israel Adesanya's time. Every time I pick against a guy who's like on this meteoric rise and they're supposed to be the dude, I'm always wrong. Every single time. Um, I did this with Conor McGregor. I remember I was picking against Conor really early. I just didn't buy the hype. I was like, it's going to be hype, hype, hype. And uh, I was just wrong. I mean, the truth is, he, you know, he had that it factor. And there's something about Israel Adesanya right now. There's this thing in my mind where I'm like, he really believes that he is God's gift to fighting. And I think when he has money, training partners, he's at the very, very top right now. He can, it sort of all comes together at this point. And I think that there's something special about him. So I, I am probably going to pick him yeah. in this fight, but I am rooting for Robert Whitaker. Yeah, well, another thing to consider as well. I mean, you're right what you said. You know, he does, he believes in it. And I saw an article this week as well where Adesanya was saying, I'm, you know, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that the UFC want to be champion. That's why it's reflected in our purses. Now, I don't know how much they're getting paid, but he said, I get paid substantially more money than Robert Whittaker, and that's for a reason. Now, I don't know if that's true or false. I haven't seen any uh, any numbers you know, uh, regarding that, but that was an interesting thing that Adesanya said. And another thing to bear in mind is, you know, it's been almost a year and a half since we saw Robert Whittaker. In the last two years... Um, Adesanya's been on a tear. He's been fighting so regular since he got to the UFC. In yeah. 2018, he's fought one, two, three, four, five, six times in the UFC, right? So there is a familiarity, right? The big fights, being in the big moments, dealing with the crowd, the nerves, all that stuff. That does suck it out of you. Now, Adesanya's got that. He's not the type of guy that's going to, you know, fold under the pressure, the mental pressure of the fans and the moment. You know, uh, he, he's good like that anyway. But the fact that he fought so regularly is going to be advantageous ages but there's also another side is he possibly burned out you know is he burnt out from fighting so much because the fights aren't necessarily the hard parts the training camps now if you look at his last fight his last fight was in april so that's what six months away so that's a decent amount of time to recover take it easy so i don't think that'll be too much of a factor then on the flip side robert whittaker he hasn't fought since as i said 18 months away you might say well is he going to be nervous is he gonna you know is, is, is the moment going to get to him because he's fighting the superstar in the stadium and all the rest of it? Again, I don't think so either. Robert Whittaker is very sure of himself. Also, another thing, we don't know what Robert Whittaker we're going to get. 18 months is a long time to be away. Mm. And if you're following him on Instagram, he's always doing jiu-jitsu, he's always in the gym, he's always working out, he's working on his wrestling. So I think we're going to see an even better version of Robert Whittaker. So I think this fight, this fight is going to be an absolute classic and I cannot wait for it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below of what you thought of the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified for more.